Hi, it's Patrick with E38. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your MLID reach receivers as a basin rover over the internal long range radios. We recommend running the latest firmware with your receivers, so if you didn't take advantage of our complimentary updates or purchased elsewhere, see our guide on flashing the latest firmware. I'm going to configure my receivers using the reach panel in my web browser. However, you can also configure your receivers in the MLID Flow app. If your computer runs Mac OS or Linux, you can connect your receiver over USB and search 192.168.2.15 to access the reach panel. If you're using Windows, you will need to find your receiver's hotspot in your Wi-Fi settings. Then click connect using a password instead and enter the default password of MLID reach, all lowercase, to connect. This step is unnecessary if you've already connected your receiver to your Wi-Fi network as outlined in our workflow tips video. Once connected in your web browser, search reach.local to access the reach panel. Now let's configure our base. For now, I'm gonna set my correction input to off. Then click base output, and I will select lower radio. Take note of the frequency and air data rate as we will need to use the same settings in our rover. The base settings and how we achieve our base marker are very important for this configuration. I'll cover how we recommend setting that base marker for accuracy and repeatability at the end of this video. For now, let's move on to our logging settings and enable backup source data for Rhinex. We then can leave everything else on default settings. I will finish by renaming this receiver as my base in the receiver info tab. Moving over to the rover, click on correction input and set that to lower radio using the same frequency as the base. I will also turn off the base output on this receiver since I won't be using it in that way. I will enable backup source data for Rhinex, same as we did with the base. And again, I will rename this receiver as my rover. Now let's get into setting the base marker since this will vary job to job. Ideally we have a known point that we can import before we even show up on site. If that's the case, I can navigate to flow360.emlid.com and log in with my Emlid account to create the project I will be working on. I'll select new project, then name it, and select the correct coordinate system, vertical datum, and linear units. I will then import the point file containing my known point. You can also manually enter the point if given the coordinates outside of an accepted file type. Now that that is loaded in Flow360, it will sync up on the MLID Flow app on my data collector. Out in the field, I set my base over the survey nail of my known point and make sure to attach the low ray antennas. We recommend using the Bluetooth connection for quick switching between base and rover. If you're using Android, you will need to activate Bluetooth Low Energy if you haven't already. To do so, rapidly tap the Profile tab in MLID Flow until the window for internal settings pops up. Then toggle on BLE, and now we can see the Bluetooth connection of our receivers. I'll connect to the base. Then tap Base Settings and Configure. Since I'm using a 2 meter pole, I'll correct that first. MLID Flow will add the additional 134 millimeter antenna offset automatically. Then change coordinate entry method to manual, then tap choose from project. Then 
select the project containing the known point that we set up in MLIDFLOW360 earlier. Select that point, apply, and save. This is the best way to ensure our base and therefore our rover will have a high degree of absolute accuracy. Switching over to the rover, we can see we are receiving corrections from our base and quickly have a fix. The move the receiver message is shown to initialize our IMU and enable tilt compensation. Tapping the blue plus button will take us into the measurement view. Again, I'm using a two meter rod, so I will tap on the pole height and adjust that for the correct height. I'll also turn on averaging for the points I collect. And since I'm not taking any shots that require tilt, turning off tilt compensation and leveling my rod eliminates the need to wait for the IMU to initialize, as well as removing the error associated with tilt compensation. If we don't have a known point, hopefully the base can receive corrections from an NTRIP network. I have Ohio's DOT network, so I will connect to that with NTRIP over Bluetooth. Now that I have a fix with my base, I can collect an averaged fixed point. Then I can go back into my base settings as before and manually choose that point from my project to use as my base marker. Now switching to my rover and collecting points will yield a high level of both absolute and relative accuracy. In the case we don't have a known point and there isn't an entrip provider we can connect to, we will need to set our base marker a bit differently. Our suggestion is to collect a point using an average single solution and importing that in the same way we did with the known points. This way we can repeat this base position on this job site and maintain a high level of relative accuracy. So we will connect to the base, then go into our project and tap the blue plus button and adjust our survey settings to allow us to collect a point without a fix. We can average that point for up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds or just collect one quickly since either way our absolute accuracy won't be very good. Remember to turn fix only back on for the rest of your survey. With that point collected, we will go back in the base settings and import that point. We can also leave our base logging for Opus in this configuration if we ultimately need absolute accuracy on this project. This has been Patrick with E38 Survey Solutions. Thanks for watching.